If you're just starting out performing with your saxophone, chances are you've already experimented with some saxophone effects. Maybe you stuck some reverb on, maybe a little bit of delay. delay. But what if you wanted to take that all the way and go crazy with the effects on your saxophone? What would that even look like? Well, I'm gonna help you answer that today because I'm talking with Rich Castillo. He's a sax school member. Now here's the thing, right? Although he started out as a classical saxophone player, he's actually recording and playing gigs with a very full on band at the moment called the Calistow Boys. <laughs> This is a mathcore band. It's like a full on metal band. Yes, that's right. He's playing metal on his saxophone. So let's have a chat with Rich and find out the setup that he's got. I think it's gonna blow your mind. So what's that whole experience like as a saxophone player? It's it's unlike any other saxophone situation that I've been in. I came up in a in progressive metal, a different subgenre of metal. I was playing mostly guitar in that band, but we decided to to throw in some sax. And it kind of started the same way with the Cows Dow Boys. Um, there was a couple small parts um, on the first album I did with them. And, and then when I started playing with them live, I was like, well, I'm not going to just sit around uh, on the side of the stage <laughs> or on stage with, with just waiting for my two solo parts to come up. So I decided to kind of learn the guitar parts and apply them to saxophone. So as you can imagine, Rich has to have a pretty full on setup to compete with all the other stuff going on in this band. So I want to ask him about his actual pedal board setup. Check this out. That's quite a setup there. So is that like one chain that your sax mic is going through? Yes. Um, yeah, it starts here um, and ends here. Right, um, so talk us, talk us through the elements one by one, Rich, if you don't mind. Sure, yeah. Um, it starts right here with my preamp. When I'm in the studio, I like to run my uh, AKG condenser mic and it needs phantom power. Yeah, when I play live, I use a Samson wireless mic okay. and that is at line level. So you don't need a preamp. So after your preamp, you're going into... So this is a, a noise gate, which basically like just shuts off the signal, like you can set the threshold. So basically what that does is it won't let any sound pass through until you get over a certain level. So if you're not playing, the, the microphone's not gonna go through. Exactly, yeah. So like when I when I have parts where, you know, maybe everyone drops out, but like the singer and a bass player, it's, there's no feedback. Pitchfork uh, by Electro Harmonics, it's like a harmonizer octave pedal. It has like perfect fourths, perfect fifths, everything. And then it also has one, two, and three octaves down or up. Wow. Yeah, what so do you use most I, commonly on the show? So there's this one part where I kind of replicate the sound of a bass, a distorted heavy metal bass. Um, so I put it uh, two octaves down, and then I also use this right here. It's a fuzz pedal. Um, so with those two combined, it sounds pretty much like a bass. So when that part comes on live, it just kind of punches you in the chest. <laughs> That's amazing. So this is another, it's, a, it's pretty similar. It's actually a smaller version of this thing called a whammy pedal. The, the original version has like a, a, you ever see a wah pedal? Has, it has the, yeah, sure. the thing you step on and you can control it. This is a different version where you can set how fast it goes up or down. And when, look, you can see the light when I press on the pedal. You can't control it with your foot, like how fast it goes up and down, but you can set it. And then when you press down, it goes up. And when you let go, it goes back down. Yeah, oh, that's cool. That's cool. It's got a really compact, compact whammy pedal. Yeah, exactly. This is the fuzz pedal I was talking about. I like this one because it's a little bit in between distortion and fuzz. So I like it a lot for that and for to get that uh, bass sax sound. And I do that a lot, not just with the band too. Like I'll do covers online. I'll take uh, you know one of my favorite metal songs. It has a really awesome bass part. And uh, I'll try to replicate that sound and do it with the, the pitchfork and the black edge. So where's the signal go after there, Rich? So then it goes into this. This is the Avalanche Run by Earthquaker Devices. It's a it's a delay pedal. Um, so it can do crazy stuff or it can just do your simple everyday, you know, slap back delay where you might not even notice it unless uh, unless you're looking for it, you know. You've got so many options for this pedal board, man. I think it's, it's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. And then same thing with this one. It's called the Astral Destiny, same company, Earthquaker, but it's a uh, it's a reverb pedal and it has one, two, three, four, five, like eight, eight different kinds of reverb. Again, use it as a, a regular everyday reverb pedal, you know, and just yeah. have a nice little sweeter sound. 
No, that's really cool. And then, so two things left there. Yeah, so this is a phaser, an old old boss phaser, I think from like the 80s. I like using it a lot when I just do like simple repeating patterns because it kind of like matches the the sweeping sound and it sounds really cool listening to it like grow and decay and change and stuff. And then on the last is just another another reverb pedal. I like it for simple stuff and it's called the shim verb. So it has this nice setting where it adds like a slight octave to the reverb. Okay. Um, so it has this really cool ethereal kind of sound to it, which I like for for just ambient kind of stuff. What's interesting here is that you know, most of us are just focusing on getting it this sort of saxophone sound uh, with our mouthpiece and our reed. Obviously, you're doing that, but you've also got this whole nother layer on top where you can create all these different sounds. Uh, I think that's amazing. And I obviously for the type of gig that you're doing, it's important. Mm -hmm. um, but it must also be a lot of fun. And also it's quite a lot to think about when you're on stage there. Yeah. I mean, well, that's, that's part of the reason too, why my tour board is smaller. <laughs> so, I, so I'm not like uh, either a experimenting unnecessarily or be like, Oh wait, which one do I have to press again? It's, it's more compact for sure. And then, and then when I'm, when I'm doing those kind of shows too, it's, it's all part of the rehearsal process. You know, it's not like I'm going to, I don't really do anything on the fly as far as effects go. It's all stuff that's, already worked out so when i'm rehearsing i'm also rehearsing stepping on the pedals and turning them on or off at the right time um so it's just it's just another part of the live show process yeah gotcha and i guess also in your practicing like when you're rehearsing with the band you're rehearsing like choreography i suppose of what's going on with your your yeah. pedals and your feet mm -hmm. but i bet also when you're practicing you must be spending a lot of time experimenting with the sounds and that's yeah that's when i'll experiment <laughs> yeah when i'm at home and uh, you know, sometimes there's even parts where uh, I I use um, the the fuzz pedal and my reverb pedal live to create like a synth sound, um, and and basically sounds exactly like the synth on the record. So I was able to fill out that part that we didn't have at time on the tour. Yeah, wow, well, that's really cool, really cool. Okay, well, uh, it looks to me like with a uh, a pedal board like that, there's always something extra that you'd like to stick on there. Is it is it a growing <laughs> sort of suite of of pedals? Yeah, I'm, this just came the other day. Um, <laughs> it's not as it is just an EQ pedal, so it's, I'm not going to get anything crazy out of it. But um, I, you know, it's it's never going to end. There's I have to stop myself once a week from from just buying some random pedal i saw someone using or saw on reverb you know yeah <laughs> if you had uh if you had to suggest just one pedal to a sax school member let's say somebody who's just getting started with this one experiment with some different sounds is mm -hmm. there one pedal you think would be a good starting point yeah i would say i was thinking about this uh leading up to this i'd say the delay or reverb for sure um because like i said you can just get your everyday sounds on there you know like i think some people if, if you're just starting out you might not realize that like almost every saxophone that you hear on a record is has some effects on it in some way you know whether or not you can even hear it it's it's more of a, a subtle thing and a mixing thing but you know it's it's almost always going to have some delay and reverb on there you know um so you can get a, a fuller sweeter sound or or you can use it for crazy effects but i think starting at a delay or reverb and using it just to to yeah like kind of like sweeten and enhance your sound and start there and then go from there would be a good idea one more thing that i, I want to say is i also i opened up garage band while i was preparing for this the other day and like you don't need effects pedals to do this either you know if you have a mic and an interface you run the mic right into the interface and then you open up the plugins on GarageBand, they're all free. I was comparing, you know, plugins between Logic and GarageBand. A lot of them are on GarageBand, you know? Um, wow. So you can get really basic or really crazy effects just straight right into your computer. So you can start off like that and, you know, and uh, experiment, get your head around it there before you even spend all the money <laughs> to get into the to actual physical pedals, you know? Oh, so much great information there from Rich, and I really hope that's inspired you to go and explore effect tuners a bit more yourself. Also, don't forget, if you want to dig further into your saxophone playing like Rich is doing with Sax School and thousands of other people around the world, then 
come and see what we're doing over at saxschoolonline.com. There's just so many lessons and courses in there, a real diverse group of musicians that are studying with us too, from beginners all the way through to advanced players like Rich and people that are out there even making albums. Honestly, it's all going on inside Sax School and we'd love to help you. As I'm filming it, there's actually a 14 day trial available too and the link for that's down below. But most importantly, keep practicing hard and I'll catch you next time.